<laughs> so there we were cruising around Malibu, California, as we do when this adorable ladybug lands in a parking lot. You get closer, and it's not a ladybug at all. What the heck are we looking at, man? No, it's not a bug. <laughs> it's a 1992 AutoZam AZ-1. It's what's called a Kai-class car in Japan. So these cars fall into a different tax category and a different registration category, sort of in between a full-size car and a motorcycle. So basically it fits into most overhead storage bins and tax loopholes. It will fit in the back of your pickup truck, I believe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The AZ-1 is a tiny 63 horsepower engine out of another car you've never heard of, the Mazda Carol. But its diminutive exterior dimensions are downright comical. The entire car is less than 11 feet long, about four and a half feet wide, and the roof is only three and three quarter feet above the ground. The volume of the entire AZ-1 is about equal to the cargo space in your mom's crossover. They're limited to 660 cc motors, but they're allowed to rev as high as the manufacturers want. So this thing has a 9,000 RPM red line, it's turbocharged, four valves per cylinder, and right behind your ear when you're driving. So it's a ton of fun and a ton of great noises. You got a super sporty looking interior, man. Center mount attack, Momo steering wheel. I mean, is that all stock? All that stock, yeah. yeah. They definitely made it a true sports car. Yeah, it really is like, honey, I shrunk the Ferrari. You really need to drive it to experience it. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, right. It's louder than I expected. Exactly. You you hear all 660 cc's. It's like yeah, it's like being pursued by an angry Subaru <laughs> WRS. <laughs> oh, the, the angry sound bees. is awesome. Car I haven't car. been in a car that defined the slow car fast philosophy yeah. as completely as this. Well, maybe ever. We're humming along at an aggressive like 35 mph, <laughs> and right. I am like white knuckling it. In 1992 in Japan, like who is who's kind of driving this? Like how does this car fit in? So that was the the economic bubble years in Japan. Okay. Real estate was going crazy, full employment. The problem was people were working themselves to death because there were too there was too much work. Right. And every you know the yen was very strong. So uh, you know, a lot of young people had jobs in the city and they had disposable income. And this was the kind of thing where you know, parking was impossible in the city. Right. But if you had enough. Uh, and it wasn't a very expensive car, it was about 22,000 bucks in today's dollars. Yeah. So it was the sort of thing where sort of a young person with a, you know, with an entry level job in Japan could have and could have fun with, you know, right. it was a way to sort of have an everyday practical ish car for the city, but also something that was a lot of fun and a little flamboyant, right? Yeah. Something you're, you know, you're showing off a little bit. This is great. This is one of the coolest automotive experiences I've had in a really long time. Yeah. Ah! <laughs> That's the hard part. Get me out of here. That looks cool. Yeah, getting in and out is not the most fun, but driving. Well, you, you have to remember, break dancing was very popular in 1992, <laughs> so that's part of the behavior that the car encourages. So only 4,000 of these were ever made. I mean, even in Japan, they're going to be hard to come by. So the next question is, how do I get one? OK, shameless plug. Uh, this one is for sale. We're actually importing them specifically to resell in the US. As Frequent Jalopnik readers probably already know, right. uh, once a car is 25 years old, you can bring it in even if it doesn't uh, meet all of the DOT standards. Well, put me on your waiting list. I want one. All right. Um, there you have it, my friends, the AutoZam yeah. AZ-1.